starts now. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Thank you for joining us. I'm Cindy Sexton. And I'm David Carroll. Here's what's happening this evening. The Woodmore bus driver involved in the deadly accident last November now faces additional charges. Jonathan Walker now faces 34 criminal charges. You can see them on your screen. 14 counts of reckless aggravated assault and seven counts of assault were added to his charges today. Now, police say Walker was speeding on Tally Road in the Brainerd area last November when he swerved and hit a tree. Six children died as a result and dozens of others were injured. He's due back in court on August 10th. Construction continues on downtown Chattanooga's Miller Park renovation. So do the fundraising efforts to pay for the $10 million project. And we're looking, uh, you see behind us there, what Miller Park looked like just last week. River City Company is in charge of the project and still needs two and a half million dollars. Channel 3's Kate Smith joins us now live in the studio with how it will be funded. Kate? Cindy, the project is well underway, but River City is still asking for help paying for it. Channel 3 obtained a copy of a letter sent to 25 big area businesses, suggesting the amount they should donate to dig the project out of debt. Today, crews were out working to clear the park. The park will be raised to street level and will feature an amphitheater, garden and seating. It's expected to take a year to finish. River City is partnering with the city to solicit donations. The company met with businesses recently about the project and followed up with written agreements proposing donations in thousands of dollars. Kim White, CEO of River City Company, says those letters should not have come as a surprise to businesses. This is a process White says they have followed before, and she's confident her team will be able to raise the $2.5 million needed before the park is complete. The city of Chattanooga is spending more than $4 million on the project, and Miller Park will be closed until July 2018. Live in the studio, Kate Smith, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kate. A UTC director has been accused of stealing $2,500 from J.C. Penney. Police say UTC's Director of Student Transition Programs, Jason Harville, stole money from the store yesterday. The store's manager told police that Harville stole the cash over a period of time from June of last year through July of this year. Police confirm Harville worked at the store and confessed to the crime. He's charged with theft of property of more than $1,000. Now, we contacted UTC for a response to the incident, and they responded that Jason Harville is a UTC employee. We received notice today of criminal charges made against him related to his employment at a local retailer. The university is reviewing the matter. The grand jury indicted a man on aggravated assault charges in connection with a beating on Red Clay Road. Police say Christopher Hines and two others brutally beat 60-year-old James Russell at a house on Red Clay Road in Bradley County last November. Hines will appear in Bradley Sessions Court next month. Joshua Finley and Stephanie Hines are also charged in connection with the case. Chattanooga police say a victim is in critical condition after a shooting. This happened on Brainerd Road last night around 930 at the Cancun Express. Police say the victim showed up at a local hospital with his own vehicle suffering from a gunshot wound. They tell us the victim's injuries are believed to be life threatening. If you have any information on the suspect involved in this shooting, call that number or we should say call this number at 698-2525. That's the Chattanooga Police Department. TBI officials are speaking about the potential dangers of fentanyl after deputies say it was found in the Grundy County Courthouse. Investigators say Heather Hodge placed a fentanyl patch in the door frame. Now we're told it was meant to be picked up by an inmate who was in court last Friday. Special agent in charge Tommy Farmer says the patch can be 30 to 100 times stronger than morphine. It's transdermal. It's going to absorb through the skin. So that in itself is a uh, extremely dangerous situation. The prescription drug is for people with chronic pain. Farmer now says it's one of the top painkillers that's being abused and leading to countless overdose cases. Deputies say surveillance video from the courthouse helped identify the woman as Heather Hodge. She and the inmate faced charges in the case. The Hamilton County Department of Education and former Superintendent Rick Smith do not believe they should be sued in connection to the 2015 Ottawa High School assault. 
You'll remember several basketball players were assaulted with pool cues at a basketball tournament. The lawsuit was filed by three former Ottawa High School employees who were all charged in the case for failure to report child abuse. Their records are now clean and their lawsuit alleges negligence and wrongful termination. Chattanooga City officials discussed a senior tax freeze today. The roundtable discussion included Mayor Andy Burke and District 3 Councilman Ken Smith. They want to implement a tax relief program for senior citizens to enhance their quality of life and provide financial security for seniors. They're already facing increases daily in just conducting their lives. So what can city government do to help ease that increase and this is just one of those things. Qualifying homeowners would have their property taxes frozen at a base amount which is the amount owed in the first year they qualify for the program. Even if there is a property tax rate increase in the future, the amount of property taxes owed would not change. This is just the first roundtable discussion. We'll keep you up to date at WRCBTV.com. And later at 6, a well-known Chattanooga downtown restaurant closes its doors for the last time on Friday. It's, it's a death experience for everybody, both the customers and the employees. We'll tell you why Porker's Barbecue is closing and what this means to local people when we come back. Another muggy summer night across the Tennessee Valley. Rain chances going up the next couple days. I'll have details in your 7-day forecast. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Several businesses have closed in the downtown area over the last year. Another will close Friday. Porker's. Porker's Barbecue opened back in 1989, and it's been a popular lunch spot ever since. Natalie Potts tells us why they're closing their doors. Despite large crowds today, the owner of Porker's Barbecue tells us he just can't afford to keep the doors open. Longtime customers tell us they're upset to see the business go. It's hard to believe. A lot of these people who worked here have worked here probably since the day that it, it's open, and you don't see that at very many places. It's sort of, sort of like cheers, I guess. It's, it's a death experience for everybody, both the customers and the employees. Porker's Barbecue off of Market Street will close its doors for the last time this Friday after 28 years of service in downtown Chattanooga. It's really all about family. There's only about six of us that work here, so um, we all you know, work together and um, or see each other every day, know each about each other's lives. Oh, if these walls and booths could talk, they'd tell you the story of when President George W. Bush visited in 2007. I remember when he walked out here, somebody in that building opened their window to take a picture of him and they got a whole lot of unwanted attention from the Secret Service. That was interesting. They'd say that this is the weekly spot where a father and son meet for coffee, the place where everyone knows your name and order. 
A lot of memories. I used to come here every day with my brother. Yeah, yeah, it's nostalgic. It's almost a landmark here in Chattanooga. I think they've been here 28, 30 years. I guess we took it for granted that it would always be here. So it's just sad that it's closing. The people here say they'll never forget the good conversation. <laughs> Friendships and the barbecue. Ever since we put on the doors, people have been calling nonstop. Is it true? And it's true. So now they're all coming in. I wish they would have come in and so we wouldn't have to close, but that's okay. The owner of Porker's Barbecue says he plans to open up a food truck and catering service in the next few weeks. To learn more information about that, just visit our website at wrcbtv.com. Reporting in Chattanooga, Natalie Potts, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Now, Porker's will close around 6 o'clock Friday night. That's the plan, but they may have to stay open later if there's a long line of customers and they have some food left. Now, Porker's is not the only eatery to close in downtown Chattanooga in recent months. You may remember Cheeburger Cheeburger was forced to close after their building collapsed in March. We are not sure if or when that restaurant will open again. 212 Market closed earlier this month, and the most recent closing on Market Street, Raw, the restaurant closed over the weekend last Saturday. Coming up next at 6, four people are wanted for auto burglaries. And police say they stole so much that they worked up quite an appetite. Before they uh, did anything else, they had to stop and get breakfast. Greg Glover joins us with more information on how you can earn up to $1,000 in cash if you have information on this case. Another hot day in the Tennessee Valley. We've been saying that a lot lately. Nick Austin filling in for Paul Barris this evening. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little news about some relief on the way. This week, Crime Stoppers Reward Cash is being put up to help solve a shocking crime spree from this past weekend. Four people burglarized more than a dozen cars in Collegedale. We have video and hopefully you can help us crack this one. Here's Greg Glover. First told you about this one on Monday. Now we hope that up to a thousand dollars reward and the promise that we'll never ask for your name will help shut down this strike team. They mainly were looking for guns, cash, and credit cards. And they found it. And they found it. In one night, four crooks hit more than 15 vehicles in Collegedale. Okay, Detective Brandon Allen sets the drive. scene as we watch home surveillance video from late Friday night into Saturday morning. You will see a vehicle pull up. Um, you will see four younger black males get out of Every, all four doors. They will run up to three different houses at one time and they are actually in three vehicles taking items out all at one time. 
They didn't target any particular make or model in the Edgemont and Misty Valley neighborhoods. Anything, anything that was open, they got in. Cash, cards, and electronic devices swiped, that's expected, but the number of guns stolen is troubling. It is, it's very troubling. Um, not only is it handguns, but most of the victims told me that the handguns were loaded. Uh, they did have bullets and they were, they were ready um, to be used. So that does tell me that these suspects, if they were not armed before, they are armed now. Detective Allen says if you know these guys, four black males, 17 to 20 years old, two of them had dreadlocks, you've already recognized them. Um, there's one guy that's extremely tall. He's ta actually taller than one of the trucks he's getting into, um, at least 6'3". I mean, someone knows who they are. Um, just call us. At some point, they were driving a blue VW Jetta. We got a look at them when they stopped at Crystal and Brainerd and used one of the hot credit cards. Before they uh, did anything else, they had to stop and get breakfast. Reward cash is available if you help ID one or more of these guys. In the meantime, we can all lock things down at night. Please lock your doors, uh, close your garage doors, but foremost, please make sure that your car doors are locked and secure. You take all your valuables out. Do not leave your handguns in your cars overnight. Take everything inside with you. These four may be working other parts of Hamilton County too. Help round them up before they drive into your neighborhood in the middle of the night. If you know anything, call Crime Stoppers. 698-3333. Up to $1,000 honest money is on the table for your good tip and we'll never ask who you are. Cindy. Thanks, Greg. A new gardening program for inmates in Grundy County is providing skills to help them work their way back into society. The program started two years ago with two greenhouses at the old facility. The money came from a grant from the South Cumberland Community Fund. April Anderson is serving her last day of a two-year sentence in the Grundy County Detention Center. She ended up here as a result of a drug charge. She says the gardening program has helped her grow beyond the jail walls. When you're sitting back there day after day after day and you're not doing nothing but looking at a wall, yeah, your time goes by pretty slow. But when we're out here, our days go by real quick. The program is voluntary and inmates who participate earn credits toward reduced sentences. The Grundy County Sheriff's Office says the ultimate goal is to keep the inmates from becoming repeat offenders. We're in an age where it seems like everything's going digital and online and Hamilton County courts are keeping up. Community members can now view information about thousands of court cases for free just by going online. Clerks are hoping that offering these documents online will be easier for the public and collection services. Around 80 million cases are processed through Hamilton County Courthouses every year. The website is TennesseeCaseFinder.com. Now, time to check in with meteorologist Nick Austin. He's got some good news for us. Oh, bring it on, Nick. Hey, the weekend looks great. That's the best news, but we have to get through Thursday and Friday first, and it is really, really hot across the south right now. Not just the Tennessee Valley, but even along the mid-Mississippi River Valley, we have heat index values above 100 degrees right now. It feels like it's 104 in Little Rock, St. Louis. It feels like it's 106, even up the road in Nashville, just a couple hours away, it feels like 102 degrees. And right here in Chattanooga, it feels like it's almost 100 degrees when you take the humidity and factor that in with the temperatures right now, which are actually in the mid 90s. 96 in Nashville, mid 90s from here into the city down to Atlanta as well. It's not quite as hot down in Montgomery out in Charlotte. They've been having showers and storms there. But right now in the city, it's 94 degrees, 91 in Cleveland, 92 in Athens. Uh, Blue Ridge not coming in right now, but a little while ago I just checked and it was uh, only in the 70s because a shower just moved through Blue Ridge and cooled things down. 89 Altamont, 91 up in Dayton. We've had just little spots of rain, some of them heavy, that have been moving through parts of the viewing area. A little more south of Murphy right now, just north of Blue Ridge, another shower popping up, but they're few and far between. Most of the showers and storms along a uh, frontal boundary, a cold front, from the midsection of the country all the way up to the Great Lakes. We'll see showers and storms from that system, particularly on Friday. We're still going to be in the muggy air behind that front. It'll be much less humid for the weekend. Only a slim rain chance tonight uh, if you're headed out to the Lookouts game. We're in the 90s now. It'll be in the low 80s by the end of the game. Just very muggy, but uh, just take it easy. Enjoy the game. Go out and have some fun. 
Uh, just some clouds and fog for late tonight. We're not expecting much in the way of any rainfall after dark, especially. And then tomorrow, just hit and miss showers and storms popping up in the afternoon, fading out in the evening. But as that cold front gets closer on Friday, we'll see a much better chance for widespread showers often on Friday with some thunderstorms, possibly early in the day. And then again for the afternoon and evening. Some of the storms Friday afternoon and Friday night could be strong to severe as far as winds and hail. We'll keep an eye on that. 94 and 73, the high and low temperatures. Another uh, scorcher out there. And for the rainfall, we've had plenty so far this year, but we didn't have a drop uh, out there at the airport today. Blue Ridge picked up a tenth of an inch. Scottsboro also a tenth of an inch. Here at uh, Channel 3, we hit 94. It was 91 up on Signal Mountain, also 91 Lakeside. Cleveland hit 93. Out in Murphy today, it was 90 degrees. 89 in Turtle Town, tenth of an inch for Dunlap and Cagle Mountain, and 10 mile hit 94, and Riceville hit 95 earlier. Tonight, very little chance of rain, but muggy, 75 for the low, 92 tomorrow. We can't roll out some hit and miss uh, thunderstorms across the area, and just a spot or two of rain for tomorrow night, 76. Friday on your 7-day forecast, have your umbrellas handy, widespread showers, some storms on Friday but they leave just in time for the weekend. Highs in the 80s with lows in the 60s this weekend and not as muggy. So we got some nice weather coming up Saturday and Sunday. That sounds great. Especially for the summer. Yes. And if all you heard was not as muggy, that's good. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> that's all we care Everybody about. Everybody went, ah, oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Dave. Sigh of relief. Yes. Next in sports, South Pittsburgh is primed for another region title run. Mm -hmm. Seems like I've heard that before. Okay. If you stick around long enough, you'll hear that about the Pirates a lot. They graduated a lot of talent, but Paul Shaheen says no worries. No worries. These Pirates have depth. It seems like the Pirates always have depth in yeah. 1A. I we'll guess. explain here from Vic Grider. Plus, it's no longer the offseason for the Atlanta Falcons. They're one of a few teams to start camp today. We'll hear from head coach Dan Quinn next. You know, if you were to ask me what was last year, You know, if you were to ask me what was last year, I think those guys would tell you last year was a disappointment, you know, because we didn't get to the final game. 
And that Pirates team went 12-2, and won the region, and lost in the state 1A semifinals. That team also saw 10 starters graduate. But unlike most 1A programs in the state, South Pittsburgh has depth for days. The guys we've got right now, you know, they just uh, have been waiting on their turn, you know, and that's kind of how it is here. You know, we usually have guys that kind of work their way through the program and are waiting on their opportunity. And, you know, we've got probably 15 or 20 guys that fit that mold. You know, they just kind of been waiting on their chance and their chance is here and they got to line up and play now. Part of that depth is at quarterback and there's a two man race there. Up for the job, it's freshman Braden Sanders and sophomore Jalen Hubbard. South Pittsburgh opens the season at home with Sequatchie County August 18th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. Sticking on the prep beat, the Central Pounders are enjoying a one-of-a-kind week at Appalachian State University. Central head coach Courtney Braswell has his Pounders practicing on campus and learning from the App State Mountaineers, not to mention they're escaping a little heat up there. Nearly 4,000 feet above sea level in Boone, North Carolina. We'll catch up with the Pounders next week when they host a six team mini scrimmage. The countdown is on at the SEC. Tennessee will open camp on Saturday. Georgia starts on Monday the 31st. Alabama opens camp August 3rd, one week from tomorrow. Speaking of countdowns, our countdown clock to the Chick-fil-A kickoff game between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets is at 36 days. They'll have center stage Monday, September 4th in Atlanta's new Mercedes-Benz Stadium, assuming it is done by then. It will be, don't panic. Yes, we will also have a team on site to cover every angle of that game. In the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons opened up training camp today in Flowery Branch. The gates open to the public tomorrow morning at 8.30. Practice number one set for 9.30 a.m. The Falcons, who return a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, enter camp with a three-step checklist laid out by head coach Dan Quinn. First one, can we be the best attacking team in ball? And uh, the explosive plays, uh, TFLs, um, eliminating explosive plays, that speed that we want to play with. Uh, the second one is about the ball, and it's our turnover margin uh, that's so important to us. Uh, one that we added, we want to make sure uh, our play at the end of the halves and the end of the games in all three phases. Uh, we're going to emphasize that as hard as we can. And then the last one is the uh, prep for this NFC South. Uh, that climb now begins, and uh, this division's a bear. You heard him mention, many of you may be hung up on that still, they plan to emphasize finishing games, i.e. the Super Bowl. We won't go there, though. The Atlanta Falcons went to the season as the odds-on favorite to repeat as NFC South champions, but like you mentioned, that South is a bear. It's a tougher road this year. New, New Orleans improved its defense at Carolina. Well, Cam Newton. We'll hear from the Falcons throughout the camp. A little day baseball for the Atlanta Braves out west. Atlanta right now trailing in Arizona 7-2 to, to the Diamondbacks. It's the seventh inning. Atlanta has the day off tomorrow. They're at Philly for a four-game set before returning home next week. And the Chattanooga Lookouts to play again tonight. They won their series opener at home last night with Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So yep. check that out at 11. Man, they're a machine this year, aren't they? Yeah, Very they're good team. Really fun, fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. What Let's about? take your dog to the ballpark tonight. It is tonight. Yeah. Oh. We don't have one. Well, you could I'm borrow kidding. somebody's, perhaps. Bring right? a cat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, quick look at the forecast. It is going to be a nice night for baseball. Very muggy, low 75 late tonight. A few hit and miss showers tomorrow. Widespread showers and storms Friday. And a drier, less humid, and cooler weekend. It's going to be nice Saturday and Sunday. Sounds good. We appreciate you That's filling in for Paul this evening. Anytime. Thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News at 6. Well, it's been a busy news day nationally. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holtz coming right up. Stick with us here on Channel 3 and at WRCBTV.com.
One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One. Three teens allegedly attacked this 19-year-old, stealing his bike and the groceries he was taking home to his family. See the crime caught on camera and hear from the victim. 